Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And today I wanted to show you a few different weaving knots that uh, I use and find helpful. So this is a warp that I am doing and it is uh, four separate colorways of four towels with the same draft. So in the past I have wound one warp woven that off and then tied a different colorway to it if I wanted to weave the same pattern. And I've done a video on that, but in this instance, since I know that there are four different colorways and there are uh, four separate uh, warps that I'm going to be needing, I decided to tie them on and wind them all at once. So as you can see, I am warping uh, front to back. Where is this back to front? It's back to front. I always get those mixed up. So I'm warping back to front, but I have not threaded my heddles yet. I am still winding on. And I have my warp rough slayed through the reed, and I have my cross back here through my leaf sticks. So this is the warp that is already wound on. And I've also got a warp down here. This is my next colorway. And I've got it threaded through another cross. And as you can see, I have been busy tying on uh, the next colorway to the one that's already wound onto the uh, back warp beam. So I thought I would show you the knots that I am using. So here you can see I've got my uh, bout of warp that I've wound and it is through my leaf sticks through the cross. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the same cross uh, for the existing warp as for the new warp. So I'm going to look and my first thread coming off my new cross is on the top. So when I look at these, I'm going to be able to see that if I hold these up, my cross is right here and I can see that there's a top and a bottom. So I am going to, and since this is uh, threaded at uh, two ends uh, per dent in a 10 dent reed, I want to keep two threads from the new warp with the two threads in the existing warp. And the way that I do that is I take the first two threads in that dent, and we'll get those out of the way. And I take the top thread in that dent, and the top thread from the existing, or the new warp. And I'm going to join those two together. Now there are two different types of weaver's knot that you can use. There's probably more, but um, there's two that I use. I've demonstrated how to tie a weaver's knot uh, with one method. And that method is to take your existing warp, put it in your left hand, take your new warp, put it in your right hand. Take the existing warp and make a loop doesn't matter um, whether the tail goes over or under, just make a loop and pinch that. So now take your new warp and make another loop, but this time put the tail under the, the short tail goes under the long tail and then pinch it there. Now you're going to take the old warp, 
put that loop through the new warp loop and then just kind of pinch the end so that you can uh, keep hold of it. Keeping this pinched, take the new warp's tail and push it through the old warp's loop. Reach around, grab that, and keeping hold of all four legs, pull in opposite directions. And pull it real tight and then let go of the tails and pull again. And that will ensure that it is tight and it's not going to come undone. So we can push that one off to the side. We'll do that again. Loop. And here is, so this is the bottom one in the bottom thread in my cross behind the reed. This is the bottom thread in the cross in front of my reed. Loop it, push the left loop through the right loop, then push the tail through the loop. Grab all four and pull in opposite directions. There. Now I'm going to grab the next two threads from my front cross. I'm going to grab the next two threads from my back cross. Separate the top thread from the back cross. Grab the top thread from the front cross. Make my loops. Push through there. Put the tail through the loop and pull in the opposite direction. Okay, so now those tails were a little long, but I want them to be fairly consistent. But if you want your tails to be a little bit shorter, before you grab them, you can kind of tug them so they're a little bit shorter and then pull in opposite directions. And those are a little bit shorter. So I like to do a whole, um, I would do this whole uh, color and then I would go back and I'll trim the uh, tails. And I usually take two threads at a time. So I separate one dent and your knots are not going to be in the same spot every time. So just kind of pull them a little bit so that they do get to be, a, you know, in the general direction at the same time. Get your tail sticking out the front. And I find it's easiest if I uh, put it over my finger and kind of give it some tension and then I can get my tails out. Pinch those and then pinch right in front of the knot. Then take your scissors and being careful not to cut your fingers, trim those very close. Now those are nice short tails and you want short tails because when you're weaving this and these are trying to pass each other when you change sheds, with the long tails, they will get tangled up with each other and you won't get a clean shed. With the short tails, you have less opportunity of that happening. And if it does, it's easier to clear the shed. So we'll go ahead and do these two. Pinch them and trim them off. So I'm trimming them probably, um, I don't know, eighth of an inch, a little more. All right. So let's look at the other 
type of weaver's knot. So again, we'll get our two threads from the back cross, our two threads from the front cross. We're going to tie the top thread and the top thread together. With this method, you take the existing cross or existing warp thread and you hold it horizontally. You take the new warp thread and you hold it vertically and then you pinch where they cross. Now you're going to take the long portion of the new warp, wrap it around the thumb and around that back rabbit ear and then just kind of pull the loop um, not tight but just kind of snug it up and then pinch that long tail in between everything so you're behind this rabbit ear you're in front of this rabbit ear now take your right hand rabbit ear which is your existing warp and poke it through the loop that is around your thumb. So you can see I've got the new warp is behind the loop. The old warp is in front of the loop. Now grab those two rabbit ears and pull. There we go. Pull. And I like to kind of snug up the new warp thread and once you get it snug then hold the rabbit ears firmly and kind of pull this down and holding the rabbit ears and the new warp thread pull very firmly and you should feel a snap or kind of a little pop and that means that the old warp thread has locked into the new warp thread. Uh, as a double check, if you take the short tail of the new warp thread and the long tail of the new warp thread and don't hold the old warp thread and pull, now you can see how it, it kind of flipped up that is secured. So now it's not going to come apart. So let's do that again. So old warp is horizontal, new warp is vertical up behind the old warp. Go around the thumb and behind the left rabbit ear in front of the right rabbit ear. Take the right rabbit ear, poke it through the loop. And sometimes that's a little challenging. Hold them together and pull. And just to double check, there. All right, let's do that again. Get those two. And these two. And the top one from the old, the top one from the new. Make your cross around the bunny ears. Through the loop. Snug it up and pull. There. Now I'm going to show you what happens. Oops. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't get it securely tight. And it's very critical that you do get them securely tight. Otherwise, it will pull out when you put tension on it and you will have to retie it uh, while your warp is on the 
when you're weaving. So if I were to just kind of snug that up and I don't get it real tight, when I pull these apart, they just come apart. And that's because um, it doesn't uh, create that lock in there. So that is why you want to snug it very tightly and uh, possibly pull on the alternate legs. Put that in there. And you can get these pretty short. See how short I was able to get that? So pull on the opposite ends. And if you feel it start to slip, just pull on those two ends again. And now it's locked in. So there are the two types of weaver's knots. Now, the third knot that you could use is just a simple overhand knot. And we'll get these out again. So the way you do that is hold the two parallel and hold them together. Create a loop and it can go front or back, either way. Um, I do it the front way. And then tuck both tails through the loop and then cinch them up. Okay. And that's a nice strong knot. Hold them together, loop them around, and I <laughs> all right, let's try this again. Hold them together, loop them around, tuck them through, and this is one of the reasons I don't use an overhand knot. <laughs> because I can never get the little buggers through there. All right, there we go. And see if we can even up our loops. There we go. And together. All right. And then you can um, clip those off short and they will be perfectly fine. Okay, so the uh, fourth kind of knot is not really used for uh, joining one work to another, but it's a useful knot, and that is a um, slip knot. So a slip knot I use for many, many reasons. Um, but mostly when I'm winding my warp, so I have, so let's say I'm measuring my warp out and I'm on my warping board and I have uh, the end of my warp that I need to attach to my peg. So I could loop it like this and tie an overhand knot like that. And cinch that up and put that loop over my uh, warping peg and away I go. But then when I get to my um, my work then I either have to cut it off here and that thread is going to be shorter than the others or I have to try and pick this knot out. And I don't like doing that. I don't like either of those options. So let's pick that out now. And instead, I use a slip knot. 
So a slip knot, you hold the uh, short tail in your left hand and the right tail in your right hand. And I'm right-handed, so I describe them that way. If you're left-handed, you would probably do this in reverse. But fold the right over the left and make a loop. Tuck the right through the loop from the underside and pull it out. And then tug on the short tail and tie the knot. Now you say, well, but you still have a knot there. Do I? Do I have a knot there? Let's see. Nope. No knot. And that is the good thing about a slip knot, is it does just that. It slips. So I can make my loop bigger. I can make it much bigger. I can make it very small. And then I can make it big again. And when I am done with that loop and I take it off of my working board and I bring it over to my loom and I have all my ends, um, I just pull on the short end and my knot disappears. And now this, this thread will be a little bit longer than the rest of my threads because um, some of the length was used up in this loop, but it's easier to add, uh, cut that extra length off than it is to try and add length to the other ones. So that's a very handy uh, knot to, to know. And the last knot I wanna show you is a lark's head knot. Now a lark's head knot is typically used where you want uh, the you want it to be able to um, cinch up on um, whatever you're attaching to, but you also want it to be able to loosen very easily. Uh, so a lark's head knot. So if you take a loop like this and you put your fingers through here and grab the legs like that and then pull a loop. You can then have a knot that will easily cinch up very tightly and hold very well, but will also come undone very easily. And like the slip knot, it just slips out. So where I would use this is um, when I am winding my warp, I use these uh, bottles to um, create weight on my warp threads and hold them while I wind on. And the way I do that is I take a loop of cord, and this is um, this is probably about uh, 12 inches, maybe not quite quite 12 inches uh, in diameter, and I fold it in half, and I take my warp, and I loop it around like this, and I pull that through there and tighten it up. Now that's very tight and the more I pull on it, the tighter it's going to get. But if I let tension off of it, it comes undone quite easily. So I cinch that up and with the other end, I take and I 
put my fingers through there. I grab the legs and pull it through to make another loop. I put that loop over my bottle and I cinch that up. Now I can let this dangle off the side and it creates tension and weight on my warp. And you can't see behind the, let's see if I can, so you can see behind the reed here that that is nice and it's tight, but it's not super tight. And these bottles weigh, um, well, they're 16 ounce bottles. They're 20 ounce bottles. So, you know, they weigh a, a decent amount, um, but not too much. So uh, I've used this method with um, like one pound hand weights also, and that works. Uh, so the nice part about these uh, is, so with the tension on it, they are very sturdy. They're not going to slip, but once you let the weight off, they come off very easily and they come off easily from the warp also. So that is a snitch knot. So those are the five knots that I tend to use quite a bit and that I thought you might find useful. So if you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so that you can get notified when I release future videos. Thanks and happy weaving.